Holy father. I'm sitting around. I'm trying to watch The Crown. I'm going to start. I'm going to binge The Crown. I'm getting ready for Serena Williams to play her semifinal match. Just having a day. All of a sudden, I hear from Coca, get ready. Fernando Tatis has signed a $340 million 14-year contract. Just take that in. Take it in with me. $340 million. Who's higher than that? Yes, you're right. Mookie Betts is. Yes, he is. Good. Oh, you're right. Mike Trout is. That's it. He's now the third highest contract notionally. People are saying it's the highest AV. No, it's not. Third highest notional dollars. That's amazing to me. Fernando Tatis. Do you know how old Fernando Tatis is? He's double doses. He's not going to be a free agent. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Coke and I have our issues. You know this. He's got four years left till free agency, and Coco will not let me say it on nothing personal. I have to say he has three years left after this year. It's February 17th. He has four years of baseball until he's a free agent. He has signed away 10 years of free agency, the rest of his arbitration years. What's he doing? No, I'm just kidding. What in the name of holy crappers are the Padres thinking? Number one, do you know how you win titles? With pitching. They now have two $300 million contracts, both position players. Yes, they traded for Blake Snell. Yes, they traded for you, Darvish. I agree. That's now. You're going to have Machado, who's only entering year, mm, talk to me, Cocalicious. Is it year three? Is it really only year three now of Machado's 10-year, $300 million deal, or is it already year four? I'm going to say it's year three. Now, don't count next year. I want to know how many years Machado's played with the Padres. I think it's two, and this would make year three. Seven more years. Half of Tatis's contract. Two position players over $300 million. You can't win that way. Why'd they do it? How did it happen? Very simply, they approached the agent and they said, we would like Fernando Tatis to be the face of baseball. We would like Fernando Tatis to be the face of the Padres. What do we need to give you where you will agree right now? And we're going to need a discount because you've got four years until you're a free agent. You're not even in arbitration yet. So what's it going to be? Give me a number. Give me a discounted number. Oh, $24 million a year? Wait a minute. 24? I can do that. No, no, no. Oh, you want 14 years? Wait a minute. That's 24, 48, 96. That's, that's $340 million. Oh, you're right. He wouldn't make that much money for the next four years. So it's really more than that when he's going to be free agent. Is that how we're going to break down the deal? Okay, that works for us, actually, because we'll get guarantees now that you'll play for us and you have a chance to outperform your contract. And in return, we'll take every ounce of the risk. Hold on. I've got Rob Manfred on the other line. What, Rob? You're sure? No, you don't know what's going to happen next season. There is a new collective bargaining agreement. There could be a work stoppage. I understand. What else, Rob? Oh, there could be a maximum in terms of length of contract. Oh, there could be that too. Okay, what else? Oh, there could be a maximum in how much notional dollars you can give to a player. That could be negotiated. Yeah, I actually agree with that too. I'm sorry, Rob, did you call Peter Seidler or Ron Fowler? Did you call anybody when you heard this was happening? Did they call you? What did you say? Oh, I know what you said. Are you out of your mind? I've been spending every minute since I heard the news, be, be pretending that I'm running the Padres. I want them on my team. I don't want to lose them to the Dodgers. I know the Dodgers have all of their contracts falling off the books after two more years. They've got this year and next year with Bauer. And after that, the Dodgers are starting again. I know the Dodgers have deep pockets. I know their TV deal. I know their issue with the debt service rule. I know their issue with depreciation and amortization. I understand all of that. 
but I also know that I'm going to have my window open now. That's why I traded for Blake Snell and you, Darvish. For now, we want to win right now. So then why do you have to pay Tatis for later when you've got him now? You made your bed with Machado. You made your bed with Hosmer. What's the purpose when you know you're going to have to go get more pitching after Darvish and Snell? Because you know that having two position players of 300 million simply is a formula that will not work. Oh, but you know better. This is the way AJ Preller is. When you get permission from your owner to do a deal like this, you do it every second. I'm not blaming AJ Preller for this. No way. AJ Preller will not be the GM at the end of this contract. Fernando Tatis will not be a Padre at the end of this contract. There's a decent chance Peter Seidler will not own the Padres at the end of this contract. There is a guarantee that at least one more team will be paying part of this because for Fernando Tatis to be an elite performer for 14 years, wait for it. Just wait one second while I calculate the percentage chance that Fernando Tatis is an elite performer for 14 years. Coca, can you come up with me? I know it's late at night and I know you're tired and I know you're not getting paid. Just tell me. How many 10 plus year deals have worked out for the team? Can you name one? Just come up with one. Are we going to say that Harper Machado, we don't know yet. It's still early. Stanton, he's got seven years left, a little early. Hmm. Pujols, he's in his last year with the Angels. That didn't work out. If the Padres do not win a World Series in the first seven years of this 14-year deal, and I don't mean make the playoffs, and on today's Nothing Personal, I made a big thing that making the playoffs is what matters. But when you make your bed with contracts that take away your entire financial flexibility, when you have no idea what baseball is going to look like going forward, what the sport's going to look like going forward, you are doing this for what? So we can say you won the offseason? That's the take you're going to hear all day, all night, all week, all spring. The Padres won the offseason. The Padres won the offseason. Who cares? I'm a veteran of winning off seasons. Doesn't mean a thing without the ring. You got to be the winner of the regular season. So the hot take is the Padres make two great pitching acquisitions, fortify their bullpen, lock in Tatis. They're going to say it that way. Everyone's going to say it. They locked up their franchise player. But you know better. He was already locked up. Four more years, even if you want to do coca math. Three more years plus this year. Three plus one or four. He was locked up. Coca, if you whisper to me that you think Joey Votto's 10-year deal was good for the Reds, I, I can't even believe it. I assume you're saying Joey Votto is another example of a player whose deal was bad. Can we, I'm not even going to talk about Joey Votto. I love Joey Votto. Great player. Postseason three times. That's very nice for Cincinnati. No. That's not a good deal. Baseball contracts are guaranteed. What pressure were the Padres under? When we signed Stanton to 325, we were desperate with a capital D. I feel like singing from the music man right now. T, trouble. What pressure? Just answer me that one question. Riddle me this. Why would you make a great offseason when I'm willing to say the Padres had a terrific offseason knowing that their window to compete with the Dodgers is now because the Diamondbacks and the Rockies both stink and I'm completely blanking on the other team in the NL West? Is that really possible that I'm blanking, Coca? Am I tired? Am I grumpy? It's not the Dodgers. The Dodgers, the Padres, the Diamondbacks, the Rockies. And who else? Oh, Dodgers, Padres, Diamondbacks, Rockies, who else? It can't just be the four teams. He forgot Coca. <laughs> I love emergency boss. You know why nothing personal makes me smile and why I love doing it every day and sometimes twice a day? There's not a lot of things I like doing twice a day. I mean, there's some things, but not, not many. The reason I like doing an emergency pod like this is this is raw. This is visceral. The Giants, thank you very much. This is real visceral. We're giving you our instant analysis in long form on nothing personal. And I'm telling you what's in everybody's mind. 
Do you know what's in Steve Cohn's mind right now? Let's go down the list right now. I'm going to take you to players and to owners. Steve Cohn, despondent. What's Lindor going to want? Well, Steve Cohn right now is calling baseball, which is what I would be doing. I need the breakdown of the deal. How much is Tatis getting? Not this year, not next year, not the year after, not the year after, but the year after that. Because I need to know what Tatis is making in his free agent years, because that will inform me what I have to give Lindor. When executives look at this contract, they will look at it as a bifurcated deal. It's an arbitration certainty deal for the next four years, and then it's a 10-year free agent contract. Is it more than 10 years, 300? I don't think so. I think he'll make around $40 million in three years of arbitration. Let's say that he's going to be at 7, 12, and 20. That's 39. That's about 40. So let's say it's 300 over 10. It may be the exact Machado deal. How many MVPs does Tatis have, by the way? I'm just curious when he signed this deal. Has he won one yet, Coca? I'm not sure he has. Has he won any batting titles? Have they been to the postseason last year? Expanded playoffs? Not counting that. No, I don't think so. Okay, so special accomplishments he doesn't have, except one playoff appearance. I think he, did he win Rookie of the Year? Finished third for Rookie of the Year, fourth in MVP in 2020. Yeah, do you know what you get for win, placing fourth in MVP? Nothing, nothing. Okay, so Steve Cohen's despondent, but he's going to find out by calling baseball how much uh, he's going to get, Tatis will get in his free aging years. Okay, what if you're Juan Soto? If you're Juan Soto of the Washington Nationals, you're doing the Snoopy dance. Your tail is wagging because you know very well that you are a better player than Fernando Tatis. It's not a question that anyone who's inside baseball asks. Not one person will tell you that Tatis is a better player than Juan Soto. Now, Tatis is a great player, don't get me wrong, but he's not Juan Soto. Okay, so Juan Soto says, all right, I'm going to look at his free agent deals, and I know that big money is being paid, so I'm going to be excited knowing I'm going to get my $300 million 10-year deal. All right. Hi, I'm Carlos Correa. Oh, yes, I am. I'm very happy. Hi, I'm Trevor Story. Are you happy? Your team just traded away Nolan Arenado, and you are a free agent shortstop, maybe a better shortstop than Tatis right now. Yes, I'm very happy there too. What about the Dodgers? Dodgers say good. We loved it when our competitors signed deals like this. Our desperation to sign Stanton was met with absolute disdain from other teams because they knew that that contract was a must sign for Stanton because we gave him exactly what he wanted. And they knew that it would financially hurt the Marlins going forward to field a competitive team. I urge you all to remember, this is not basketball. You cannot have the best player in the game, bring on two other people, form a big three, and you call yourself the Brooklyn Nets and you make it to the finals. No. Just look at the Los Angeles Angels with Mike Trout and Albert Pujols. Two position players. You know what they did with $300 million contracts or $200 million contracts, whatever, whatever? Nothing. Nothing. Mike Trout has exactly zero playoff wins. So then they go ahead and sign Anthony Rendon to get another high-paid position player. When are they going to learn? Well, the Padres didn't learn. I'm frustrated. It's not that I want players to get paid. Don't misunderstand me. If you can get a deal like this, you're going to sign it every single time. Tatis didn't have to think about this. He called up his father. I mean, I was, I remember Fernando Tatis Jr. when he was a kid and just so good, so good. Just as a kid, you could tell, right? And what was interesting is that no way to know he's going to be better than his father, just like no way to know at that time that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. would be better than Vladimir Guerrero Sr., which, by the way, there's no indication that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. will be better than Vladimir Guerrero Sr. But all you hope for when you get into the game of baseball is that you can be in a position like Fernando Tatis Jr., where you are matched up with a team who is desperate, and the Padres are acting desperate for no particular reason. All right, another little thing that you're going to read, and I want to quash this. I want to stop right now. People are saying that Acuna with the Braves, and this is all over Twitter right now, who signed an eight-year, $100 million deal in April of 2019. People are saying how angry he is, how upset he's going to be. No. When that deal was signed, that was a victory for Acuna. Totally different scenario. Do you remember on a Nothing Personal episode, Coca, when I told you which players are more apt to sign extensions that are reasonable and team-friendly are players who need money, their families need money, and they want security for life, and they've never had money. And we said Fernando Tatis doesn't fall into that category. Fernando Tatis Sr., he had career earnings of, let's say, $18, $20 million dollars. It's nothing to sneeze at. Ha choo, ha choo. It's not 340, but it's enough that Tatis did not 
have to sign the way Acuna did. Acuna got a great deal. He got financial security for him, his family, his kids, his grandkids, and it's only an eight-year deal. That means he's got six years left. If Acuna continues to perform, can he get 240 over six? 40 million a year? Is he Trevor Bauer? We'll see. It's not out of the question because of inflation, because who knows where the league is? There'll be new TV deals by then. Who would have ever thought we'd have $40 million players now, Trevor Bauer, or $36 million players now, Garrett Cole? Who would have thought any of that? When you get promised that amount of guaranteed money, you take it. So where does this end? Well, this ends right now with a cup of water. It ends with a shower. And it ends with me telling you that under no scenario is this a 50-50 deal. 99% of the risk goes to the Padres and 1% of the risk goes to the Padres. Fernando Tatis took 0% of the risk. He gave zero discount, and I mean zero. He is getting paid top dollar in a sport that has an uncertain future in bargaining, in a country where it is uncertain when revenues will return to the levels they were, and he signed a top of the market deal three years plus another year before he had to. When he was offered that amount of, that amount of money, do you know what he did? <laughs> do you know what he did? He looked right at his agent. And he said, listen, don't tell him yes just yet. Just wait a day. Just wait a day. Because I want them to think I'm actually thinking about it, but I'm not going to think about it. And then when you call them and you say yes, I want you to say one thing. Thank you, San Diego. This is just business. Sorry, LA and everyone else. It's nothing personal. <laughs>